The first night out, I camped with the camels. I placed my pot right on the fire like some absolute amateur and burnt the shit out of my risotto <laughs> night one. This is the fourth and last day that I'm trekking with Sophie. It's kind of sad for me because I've got to move on and she's going to continue her solo camel trek all the way across Australia with camels that she caught from the wild and trained herself. Any yabbies I can feel with my toes? <laughs> all right, I just had a very nice swim in the dam. Check the yabby trap, no yabbies, but I'll leave it in overnight. Now it's pretty hot and sweaty, dusty, lots of burrs and prickles, so it's so nice to just get in the water, even if it's muddy, and just chill off. And yeah, it's just a nice feeling. Probably go and sink the rest of the port around the campfire. Fantastic campsite under a tree. Lots of grass around. The feed trees are great for the camels, and they're really close by. So Sophie doesn't have to like wander a long way off and there's a fair bit of food on the tree so that makes it all easier. <laughs> Camels look clumsy but they're actually very delicate and careful about where they tread. They won't tread on your stuff, they won't even knock over a tripod. They're very aware of their bodies. This is what it's like all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Every night, <laughs> you never have to chase them. <laughs> you just call out and they'll just come back to camp like this. Yeah. <laughs> and I just spend most of my time sitting down, Relax. doing nothing. <laughs> I'm like, oh great, you get all these shots of me just kicking back on my swag. <laughs> People are gonna think this is what it's always like. Sophie was just joking about how it's like it's rarely looks like this and it's funny that someone's filming what she's doing and it makes it look so easy. You know, normally there's all these other stresses, but at the moment they're just behaving themselves like good little school children hanging around the camp, not running off. And it's pretty cool just having them floating about so close. I used to have one of my camels from the dairy that I adopted. He used to actually like jump up almost to like get a brand. <laughs> Some pro camp cooking going on here. The first night out I camped with the camels. I placed my pot right on the fire like some absolute amateur and burnt the shit out of my risotto <laughs> night one. <laughs> and I remember my friend Greg had come down to, to share a beer with me on the first night. He was the guy that drove me across or helped me drive across with the camels and he was like oh don't worry you got a whole nother year to perfect your risotto <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, we headed out to bring the camels back in again and came close to stepping on a little tiger snake on the way back. And that just goes to show the snakes are more active at night. And it's also a good reason why it's nice to have a swag that zips up completely at nighttime, unlike the one that I had about 20, 30 meters away from this snake. Alrighty, it is bedtime. I'm in my swag, which isn't really a swag, but it's not too bad. The stars are just unbelievable out here, as you'd expect. It's also, the moon's gone down as well, so it's as pretty much as good as it gets. And uh, my feet feel nice and relaxed because they're not wearing shoes at the moment. Uh, the fire's just dying down over there. Uh, Sophie's probably about 50 to 100 metres away <laughs> in amongst the camels because that's the most relaxing place for her because she can tell if they move and their bells keep jingling and that you know helps you know that they're there so yeah early bed and uh get up early again tomorrow so kind of it's a hard but simple and fulfilling life out here camel trekking across australia even though i'm only here for just a few days
Sophie seems totally content being out here completely by herself. And she obviously enjoys having company, but I also can see completely that she's just totally at home, sitting around the campfire with the camels and just thoroughly enjoying the experience. So many adventures that I certainly find myself on, you end up really not enjoying the journey. You really enjoy the benefits afterwards, but whilst you're actually on it, it can be difficult to really feel that enjoyment at the time but she just looks so content and it's not just about the journey like she really seems to be very content with what she's doing in life which is great and uh, she certainly is going to feel some achievement after this journey and it'll be sad for her afterwards I think when she's not on it but it's always going to be within her she'll always be able to look back to these times and it'll, it'll just be a really special place really in her life for the rest of her life. Right, it's the next morning and time to see if there's any yabbies. <laughs> there's some snails, but no yabby. So this is going to be my last day of trekking, which is a bit sad. That's been bloody awesome. The camels really look so at home in this landscape. I mean, they're obviously not native animals. But just looking out there like they do look at home out here they're the right color they blend in so well and you know it's sort of maybe it's starting to change my mind about their place in the landscape i don't know just a thought so this is the part of the morning where we collect the camels in from base their morning graze basically so we take the halt the uh, lead line off so this is called a daisy chain. You basically undo it. And it comes undone real quick. And then you just do the hobbles off. Run my hand down the leg just so they know that you're playing with the leg. Stand out to the side so they, they can't accidentally kick you as easily anyway. And then Sophie just hooks these straight under through here so they're all, you never lose them. Do you do the bell now as well? No, I leave the bell just as a bit of a safety thing, just in case like they were to take off at all. Yeah, okay, cool. You know, between now and leaving. And now we just lead them over to Delilah, the lead camel, and string them in a, lo a line. So the, the three most, I don't know, prominent three, she strings up, and the other two followers just follow along so she doesn't really have to worry about raping them up to take them back to camp to settle up. It's really messy. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a way. <laughs> Fingers through, just them like that. And what I do is I sort of just hold it on that knot there. Yeah. So you actually don't have to touch the nose peg at all. So then you can put it on like that. And Delilah might be a little bit sensitive to it because she, poor thing, had it unfortunately ripped the other day because of Charlie getting his leg hooked in it. So yeah. she's been a little bit sensitive on the nose, but um, yeah. All right, I'll give it a crack. <laughs> Strange bloke playing mm -hmm. with my nose. And you might be better off, almost like I know I use my hand there, but like she might feel like you're coming in too much from behind. Oh, right, so, can so see maybe it. like even just let her like smell it. Yeah, okay. There. I might let her come in from the front. Mm. See that? All right. Ooh. No, Missy, no. Oh, I got a bit of there. Yeah, it's probably better if you do it. <laughs> let mum do it. <laughs> Mum's normally the yeah. one that puts my nose tag on. Ah. Oh, and, oh. and that's nice. We better film that. <laughs> and that's the beauty of working with camels. The other time she copped me right in the face though, so that's a better one today. <laughs> Instant shirt change. Gee, that was a great, great handover on my behalf. I, yeah, I could yeah. tell that was coming. Tactically, <laughs> tactically done, huh? <laughs> uh.
Oh, and it never smells good. <laughs> Come on, sweet pea. No. Excuse me. <laughs> I've just got one link there that I didn't get on properly, though, haven't we? Hey? Now I'm going to try and take it off and put it back on it. Hey? Right. And it's just, this is just purely from, well for starters she, because she's only my new lead, she hasn't had it on and off many times. And then also the other day when it got torn out of her nose, she's a little bit more sensitive to it. But if you do it gently, it doesn't hurt them at all. It's just the association. Good girl. Good girl. Sophie's been very grateful for the assistance she's got from not only farmers but also Aboriginal communities like the Oakvale community who gave her clearance to transit their lands during difficult COVID times and also volunteered to go way out of their way to drop water supplies to her and really make her feel part of the community. I've had the same experiences of generosity from Aboriginal people here in Australia and over on my Saudi Arabian expedition I really felt supported by the Bedouin people. I was very lucky to have the assistance of a local Saudi Arabian guy called Khalid and he lives just outside my compound and out of the blue I just came across him next to his caravan and asked him if he might be able to assist me and uh, he wouldn't ever accept any money he was just really generous and knowledgeable and uh, in Australia he just epitomizes what we would call a top bloke in every single way. So he gave me a lot of information about camels, but his English was limited and my Arabic was almost zero. So it was difficult for me to be able to understand certain concepts. Once again, I was just so lucky to have this experience of sometimes even staying at his caravan overnight and eating and getting all this stuff, mostly done with sign language with this wonderful guy called Khalid. All right, so this morning we're just literally following this little telegraph power line and fence line right up to some silos. All right. and we can see the end goal for today already because we did a big day yesterday. There are the silos. That's where I stashed my bike. So before meeting up with Sophie, I bought a cheap secondhand bike in one of the towns along the way and I stashed it in the bushes just north of the silo. So these silos are the place where I planned to stop trekking with Sophie and get back to my car. So I basically left all my camera gear and overnight stuff with Sophie and I'm going to head off on this yellow bike and backtrack along the 60 plus kilometres of trail that we've walked along over the last few days. Straight away after setting out I noticed that all the burrs and prickles were getting stuck in the rubber of the bike tyre and then fairly soon after that the tyres both went flat. So I think I'm just going to shortcut through the bush out onto the road and have to hitch. I was going to hitch from the beginning but because of COVID I thought I probably should ride a bike because you're probably not supposed to hitch, I don't know, but I don't really have an option now. G'day mate. I'm Todd, how are you going? Yeah, Mike. So I just joined in with a girl who's taking camels across Australia. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to start her up and head back. Uh oh, that's not good. Good old Frankie just gave me a jump. Um, started now, and I don't know, something funny's going on. Don't know why I keep seeing the jump all the time. So I just picked up the trophy. Uh, just had a bit of water in the back there, so I just had a bit of a shower, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to fill up the jerry again and uh, go back to Sophie and the camels and then she can have a shower and I'll spend the night uh, with the camels. 
So I drove the trippy back, so I've got my trippy food boxes, campfire, and I'm gonna sleep up there in the trippy tent. So uh, no tiger snakes or scorpions or mozzies for me tonight. So it's final pack up day for me today. I'll help safety pack up, but then I'm gonna hit the road and uh, put the canoe trailer back on and keep driving south to home. Have to say goodbye to the camels. It's nice being reunited with my troopy and the mess that's in the back of that thing, which really needs to just get home. And I've actually, there's the canoe over there uh, behind the bush there. It's actually cracking pretty badly because of the dryness of the air here. So she's just getting used to this portable electric fence because as she gets closer to civilization, there's less and less yards and she's going to be forced to have the camels next to busy roads. So this is kind of just a bit of a practice to see how it went and get it set up. And <laughs> she had to do a test and zap of herself to make sure she had it set up correctly. But um, the camels seem to be scared of it already so that's a good thing yeah so after it's this is basically the fifth day um, that i'm now going to be leaving i'm just starting to get to know the camels and understand their individual personalities just a tiny little bit you know takes a while Hello. and they're starting to relax a little bit more around me so yeah it's been a bloody fantastic five days just you know you just don't get experiences like this you know very often it's fantastic so but I'm also looking forward to getting home. So thanks for having me, so. Like, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> Five days. Seeing someone oh. who's enjoying himself so much and so down pat in the way you're doing everything. It's been great. Oh, it's been epic. Hey, I'm so glad we can make this work. There's not many people that track me down, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty random. And sort of when you called, I was like, yeah, Mike will do it. He'll go out of his way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I loved it when you sent me the map and it was like direct line south. Maybe hours and hours driving, but at least we were in a straight line. <laughs> oh, it's been, it actually has been so nice <laughs> yeah. and so good, like chatting about Saudi and everything and your experience with the camels over there. It's been so interesting. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, and I've got so much, so much. And actually seeing you doing it. Um, you know, you can only describe so much. You just mm. can watch how you're doing it, like, mm. oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, by that. yeah. There's nothing like hands-on experience, hey. Yeah. And just so nice to have, like, I just love the chats with other adventurers that've been through, you know, the same things, the same <laughs> questions from the public, the same <laughs> trials and tribulations, kind of thing. It's been good. Yeah. yeah. I love Ooh. the I love the camel spew on your hat. Yeah, yeah. That really <laughs> <laughs> that really makes that's it now. Fairly, Thanks, Delilah. That was fresh. yesterday. <laughs> I'll give you a honk. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. See you soon. <laughs> I won't give you a honk, I'll probably spook him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate people yeah. looking at me. <laughs> yeah, so I'd hope that um, Sophie would be walking along the road and I was planning to get a nice kind of drone shot, wave goodbye, see you later, pan out into the big wide yonder. But it's too busy with trucks on this road. So she's walking along a fence line over there where you can barely see her. So I just ran over and said a quick proper goodbye. Uh, and then I'll fix the trailer, which I realise is busted, uh, not too badly, and I'll pick up the yellow bike. Yeah, so now I'm going to start heading on home. Uh, probably about 1,000 k's or so to go. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this adventure. It's just a short one with Sophie, ended up being really five days I spent with her. Uh, really amazing. So uh, if you like these kind of adventures, there'll be certainly more, many and very different kinds mostly in Australia, maybe a bit overseas, depending on when COVID sorts itself out. Uh, and please subscribe to my channel and social media things. Just Google our back, Mike, you'll find it. And don't forget to follow Sophie Madison on social media, because she's looking at uh, putting a book out, which will be great, and maybe some other things. Ho I'm hoping she's gonna do a film, uh, even if it's just a short film. So yeah, make sure you follow Sophie. And I'll catch you later.